Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making iron 3 chloride. Now, this is very useful um, in an experiment known as the chemical garden. And this is what I'm trying to do with it. When you drop um, transition metal salts into a solution of sodium silicate, the insoluble metal silicates precipitate out, and it looks like a garden. It's very, very cool. So I want to try this. But we need some various uh, transition metal salts. And one of them that I'm going to be using is iron 3 chloride. And this can be produced using three chemicals. Iron, in this form of very fine steel wool to make the reaction go fast. This uh, hydrochloric acid, which is sold as muriatic acid at places like Canadian Tire. And this 3% hydrogen peroxide. And 35%, which I do have, could be used. However, it's much more expensive and we do not want to waste our valuable peroxide if 3% uh, can be used. So basically, uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, first taking our iron wool and putting it into a tall jar. This will then be reacted with the hydrochloric acid according to the following equation. Iron plus 2 HCl gives uh, iron 2 chloride and uh, hydrogen gas which goes off as a gas. So that's the first step to do, so we'll go outside and start the reaction. Okay, so now that we're outside, we can start by, adding our, by throwing in our steel wool. Now this reaction is going to be very fast and very exothermic because of how fine iron wool we are using. Alternatively, you could use nails, it will just take a couple days to dissolve, as iron does not dissolve extremely rapidly in hydrochloric acid, although it does dissolve rather uh, quickly. So we'll just take our hydrochloric acid and throw some of this over there. And we're out of acid, although I did definitely expect this. And uh, you can see the vigorous reaction happening below. So, before this, I went out and bought another 4 liters of hydrochloric acid. So we can now finish the reaction with adding in a bunch more hydrochloric acid. There we go, that seems better. So, to first start off, we'll just let this sit here and fully react until all this iron has been dissolved. Okay, so you can see after reacting, it's very yellow. This is iron 2 chloride in solution. It's uh, slightly green, as you can see, greenish yellow. Now, we do not want iron 2 chloride, we want iron 3 chloride. So here's the first reaction we've uh, carried out. And the second reaction I've just written on the other side here. So you can see what we're going to do is take this iron 2 chloride, which is dissolved in solution, and react it with some H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, and excess hydrochloric acid, which we have in solution. This will, in turn, create um, two iron 3 chlorides, and two H2O, two water. So you can just see the reaction there. And now we can proceed to take some 3% hydrogen peroxide and add it to the solution. Um, it's You can use 3% and not 35% because 3% is much cheaper. And we should see a color change. And just like that, we are now converting the iron 2 chloride to iron 3 chloride. So we'll add a bit more of that. And we can now let this sit for a moment to fully react. So I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so uh, you can see it's rather dark, um, our solution now. And um, I've just put it on our hot plate on top of a frying pan because now we need to boil it all the way down to obtain our salt. So um, I'll just leave this out and uh, we have just about 500 milliliters and uh, we'll boil this all the way down to complete dryness. So I'll meet you back as soon as I've done that. Okay, so I boiled down our solution, and you can see we're left with um, a nice fine powder, which I've just ground up. And it appears to be a, a brownish black powder, which is exactly what anhydrous iron chloride looks like. Um, now, the hexahydrate is actually yellow, but uh, we don't have that, so I'll just be using this for the chemical garden. And um, upon, like, just dissolving it into water, uh, the hexahydrate appears not to form. Um, so I'm not totally sure how to exactly make the hexahydrate. Um, but the yellow color would be interesting. Anyhow, so for the chemical garden experiment, we would preferably have a solid chunk instead of all of this uh, powdered stuff. And it is still slightly wet, I found. So um, I'm going to be trying to compact it into this uh, very small beaker lined with some wax paper on the bottom and sides. Uh, compact it down with the end of a syringe. And then heat it up really hot in our oven. And it should totally harden together into one chunk which we can use for the uh, experiment. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, so we'll just put some in and pack it down and show you in a moment. Okay, so you can see I just took a little bit of it and packed it down to the bottom. And we may add a couple of drops of water just to kind of get everything to slowly dissolve into itself before putting it in the oven. Then we'll heat it up really hot to drive off all the water and it should harden into 
one solid chunk. And when we take it out, it may fall apart into two or three, but all of these will be chunks which can be used in the chemical garden reaction. So uh, I just thought I'd add this in if you're actually making this for the chemical garden reaction. If not, I'll transfer the rest of the stuff, put it on a separate tape, and also heat it up in the oven just to drive off the last bit of water. So I'll meet you back when that's all been done. Okay, so after drying that um, in that small little beaker, you can see that we're left with some beautiful, beautiful chunks of um, this uh, iron 3 chloride. And uh, the camera doesn't pick it up so well, but it is a slight purple color. And interestingly enough, um, depending on how the light hits it or something, it appears to be different colors. I don't totally understand what it means, but um, according to Wikipedia, under transmitted light, whatever that means, it's purple. And um, I'm kind of seeing the purple color right now. And other, under other t t uh, sorts of ways the light hits it or something, it appears different colors. I'm not totally sure. If anyone can explain that, that would be wonderful. But um, yeah, this is basically our uh, iron 3 chloride. And just remember that when you're drying this, do not heat it above, uh, I believe, somewhere between 200 and 300 degrees Celsius because it will decompose to iron 2 chloride and release chlorine gas. And this is undesired, so we just want to make sure that we don't heat it probably above 200 degrees Celsius, just to be safe. Um, anyhow, that's basically how to make iron 3 chloride, and uh, in a future video we will be using this to make the chemical garden reaction, so uh, yeah, look out for that. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.